The history of Elwood City starts with these two men, Isaac L. Elwood and Henry Waters Hartman. Why do you think these men are important to Elwood City? Well, today we're going to talk about Isaac L. Elwood. In 1833, Isaac L. Elwood was born in Salt Springs, New York. His first taste of business came as a young boy when he began selling sauerkraut. Have you ever tried sauerkraut? In 1851, Elwood, like many others, headed west to California's gold rush. The California Gold Rush was a gold rush that began on January 24, 1848, when gold was found at Sutler's Mill in California. Elwood found some success in California and returned east in 1855 to DeKalb, Illinois, where he opened up a hardware store. If you owned a hardware store in 1855, what do you think you would sell? Maybe hammers, saws, even nails. On January 27, 1859, Elwood married Harriet Augusta Miller. The couple would ultimately have seven children. Elwood rose to prominence as he began acquiring farm properties in and around DeKalb, Illinois. After the Civil War ended, he began to import horses from France. Eventually, this resulted in a 3,400-acre stock farm near DeKalb. In late 1872, farmer Henry Rose developed a wire fence with an attached wooden strip containing projected wire points to dissuade livestock to touch. Do you know what that's called? Well, he patented his first fence in May 1873 and exhibited it at the DeKalb County Fair that summer. Well, this prompted Elwood, along with other DeKalb area residents, to work on improving the concept of barbed wire. In 1874, Joseph Glidden and Isaac L. Elwood patented a type of barbed wire forming the I.L. Elwood Manufacturing Company. So, Isaac L. Elwood was an American rancher, businessman, and he invented barbed wire. Where would you find barbed wire today? Well, that still doesn't answer my question. What does Isaac L. Elwood have to do with Elwood City's history? Well, we'll find out more next time when we discover more about Henry Waters Hartman. Henry Waters Hartman was born on December 21, 1850, in Huntington County, Pennsylvania. When he was young, he worked for the Hollidaysburg Iron and Nail Company. On October 12, 1876, he married Mary Holliday. Henry and Mary had two sons. Holiday Elwood Hartman was born in 1884, and Henry Waters Hartman Jr., who went by his middle name, Waters, in 1887. Henry Waters Hartman also worked for the Pottstown Iron Company and the Gaither Steelworks, both in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. In 1883, Henry Waters Hartman opened a steel mill in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Henry Waters Hartman employed over 900 men for the production of various kinds of wire. 
He was the chairman of the Hartman Steel Company Limited, which maintained branch offices in New York, Philadelphia, Boston, St. Louis, and Chicago. In 1889, Henry Waters Hartman thought about acquiring land to build a new town. Hartman's company, the Pittsburgh Company, purchased farmlands for this new town in 1889. The farmlands became the borough of Elwood City on December 6th, 1892. In 1892, Henry Waters Hartman founded Elwood City and moved his wire plant there. The town was named after Isaac L. Elwood, who was a friend of Mr. Hartman and the manufacturer of barbed wire. Perhaps Hartman's Wire Company manufactured Elwood's barbed wire. Elwood City was founded as an industrial town, but to attract people, Hartman called it a resort town. We'll talk about that next week. To me, Henry Waters Hartman seemed to be very humble. Do you know what the word humble means? Putting other people before yourself. What about you? Would you be as humble as Henry Waters Hartman to name something that you discovered after a friend? If it wasn't for Hartman's humbleness, we might be living in Hartman City, Hartmanville, or even Hartmantown today. Look for part three of Elwood City's history next week. See you then. We know that Elwood City was founded in 1892 by Henry Waters Hartman. Hartman named his new town after his friend, Isaac Elwood, one of the inventors of barbed wire. Hartman's company, the Pittsburgh Company, was the first industry in Elwood City. We know that Elwood City was founded as an industrial town, but to attract people, Hartman played it up as a resort town. The Oliver Hotel was the first major building in town. It was built in 1890 and named for a prominent steel man, Henry Oliver. It was renamed the Lawrence Hotel in 1896. There was a crescent shaped drive in front of the hotel. This became Crescent Avenue. A grove of trees and a little park was behind the hotel. It was called the Hotel Oliver Grove. Surrounding the hotel was a beaver pond. A circle street one mile in circumference was made for racing bicycles. The plan was for a smaller circle inside the larger circle and a fountain in the center. The circle is now a street named Pittsburgh Circle. The bisecting street is named Fountain Avenue. Glen Park was located at the south end of the Conequinessing Creek and west of the 5th Street Bridge. It was a scenic park known for its beauty. Glen Park was connected to Rock Point Park. Rock Point Park was a major attraction near Elwood City. It was an early amusement park developed on a larger scale by the railroad industry in 1890. The park was located where the Conequinessing Creek flows into the Beaver River. It was named for the immense mass of rocks that extended out of the property. The park started with the Matheny Tavern or Inn. It was built in 1836. Many famous guests registered there, 
including James A. Garfield, who became President of the United States. In 1886, the New Brighton and Newcastle Railroad acquired the property and began making various improvements. The old Matheny Inn was converted into a train depot. Various small amusement rides and concession stands were added. Nature trails and picnic areas were also developed. Additional property was acquired in the next few years and the park was expanded to 145 acres. The locals began referring to the property as Rock Point Park. The early 1890s were the heyday of Rock Point Park and just over 82,000 people reported visited the park during the summer of 1890. Improvements continued as a large roller coaster and merry-go-round, small hotel and comfort stations, a bowling alley and baseball field, and several dance and dining halls were built in the coming years. The park soon became a popular summertime destination as daily trains brought people from distances such as Pittsburgh and Youngstown. Sadly, by the end of the century, with the opening of other trolley parks, such as Cascade Park, Kennywood Park, and Idora Park, the attendance at Rock Point Park began to decline significantly. In 1905, a group known as the Rock Point Amusement Company took over management of the park and attempted to revive it. The classical parasol building and Shoot the Chutes water ride and a miniature train were added at this time. When the railroads ended their passenger service to Rock Point Park in 1911, Rock Point Park would never be the same. In late June 1920, as the park would normally be open for the season, it was announced that the park was being closed indefinitely. Any dreams of reopening the park were dashed by a fire that occurred on Thursday, April 15th, 1915. Unfortunately, Elwood City never became the resort town Henry Waters Hartman dreamed of. Elwood City is far better known today as an industrial town. We will find out more about Elwood City's industries next week. To find out more about Rock Point Park, go to www.lordscountymemoirs.com. We know that Henry Hartman's company, the Pittsburgh Company, was the first industry in Elwood City. But it was Ralph C. Stiefel who was at the center of Elwood City's industry. He's the reason why Elwood City became a mill town. Stiefel was born in Switzerland in 1862. He spent many years working in France and England perfecting a revolutionary process he invented for making seamless steel tubing. Stiefel brought that revolutionary process with him when he came to Elwood City in 1894, where he was appointed superintendent of the Elwood Weldless Tube Company. Stiefel's process made Elwood City the seamless tube capital of the world and helped him put the growing town on the industrial map. Stiefel's Elwood Weldless Tube Company was quickly caught up in the merger movement of the 1890s. Reorganized as the Standard Seamless Tube Company, and then it became the National Tube Company in 1901. The National Tube and the Shelby Tube Company were soon consolidated under the U.S. Steel name, and Stiefel served as the general superintendent of all 
nationwide plants. Elwood City owes much of its own growth to the success of the tube mill. During World War II, when the plant was at its peak, it was Elwood City's largest employer, with about 4,200 workers. Stiefel's success was not only in industry, but in the community as well. Ralph C. Stiefel was mayor of Elwood City, chairman of the Lawrence County Republican Party, and served on boards of banks and other institutions. In 1895, Stiefel married Mary Bowen, whom he met in England. And they had two children, Josephine and Ralph C. Jr. In 1901, he built a large frame house at 1 Pittsburgh Circle on the corner of Fountain Avenue on a lot donated by Henry Waters Hartman. So why seamless tubes and what are they used for? Before Stiefel's invention, rolling mills could form pre-cut sheets of iron or steel into tubes, which were again welded closed. But all these tubes had seams, and seams are where the tubes inevitably split open. Rather than starting with flat sheets, Stiefel developed a process for piercing a hole straight through a cylinder of solid steel. In time, Stiefel patented several of his inventions for rolling tubes. During the great economic expansion of the late 1800s, Americans were using more tubes than ever before for piping water, steam, natural gas, chemicals, and oil. But it was the bicycle craze of the 1890s, however, that inspired Ralph Stiefel to invent a seamless tube. Where would you find seamless tubes on a bicycle? So now you know what these three men have to do with Elwood City. Isaac L. Elwood, Henry Waters Hartman, and Ralph C. Stiefel. For more information about the history of Elwood City, Henry Waters Hartman, Ralph C. Stiefel, and Elwood City's tube mills, please go to www.lawrencecountymemoirs.com.